are learning a lot more tonight about a murder in Riverview involving a cosplay model and her live in boyfriend. Turner called 911 to say she'd found her boyfriend on the back porch unresponsive and cold to the touch. I loved him and I didn't want to do that to him. October 17, 2019, started the same as most days did for Melissa Turner and Matthew Trussler. Melissa began her work as a cosplay model around 4 a.m. Later in the morning, the couple ran some errands together and returned to their home in Riverview, Florida to have a quiet evening to themselves. However, there was nothing ordinary about the following morning as Melissa awoke to find Michael's dead body outside. After Melissa called 911, the police arrived at the scene to investigate and Melissa agreed to answer questions back at the station. She denies having any knowledge of what happened to Matthew, but as the hour and a half long interview proceeded, some inconsistencies arose. Melissa initially appears distraught, crying throughout much of the beginning of the questioning. Her crying, while initially convincing, cannot hide the evidence that eventually begins to pile up against her. Numerous people familiar with Melissa and this case called her an actress, and the prosecutor called Melissa's behavior exceptional acting. Uh, he's describing a couple things, so it'll just be a minute, man. <clears throat> you need any water or anything? Please. You want a cup of water? Okay, I'll just grab that. Is that something he was grabbing you already, you know? some nice soft tissues. It's okay. That's what I was able to get, okay? I'm not too concerned with you. No, no, no. I just, you, you, you look, you're very upset. I look like a mess. I want myself. I've got it blood all over my face. I'm sure you've had better days. But given the circumstances, I understand, okay? So now we're here at the CID office. Um, I just want to go over a couple things with you real quick, okay? Just so you know, our rooms are audio and video recorded, all right? That's a camera right there, okay? And we have, we have digital recorders, so just in case the, that fails, this thing picks up what we say, okay? And it's to protect you and to protect us so we can never say that you said something that you didn't and you can't say something that we said that we did, you know what I mean? Um, like I told you back at the scene where I met you, I met you at, is that correct? Yes. And today's date, just for the record, is Friday, October the 18th, 2019, it's 10.51 hours. Met you over there. <laughs> and Ms. Turner, I, we're gonna go at your pace, okay? I'm sorry. It's okay, listen, you don't- The date killed me because we had a month and a half ago, we went to Cade's and we picked out a living room scent, but it was on back order. It was supposed to be here this week, but it was delayed. Okay. <laughs> it's and it's gonna show up, and I'm gonna have this fucking couch. <laughs> we picked it to it on behalf of my chair. It was a love seat with the console in the middle. It was supposed to be me. <laughs> okay. And it's gonna show up. And what the fuck do I do with it now? I don't know. <laughs> it never even got to sit in it with me. 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look, I know this is going to be this is difficult for you. Okay, so we're going to go. Uh, we're we're going to take our time. Okay. You know, obviously you're very upset, and, and I can understand why. Okay. Let me just go over a couple more things with you, real quick. Um, I had asked you if you were willing to come back here and talk to us back at the house. Is that correct? Yes. And the deputies transported you? Yes. Did anybody put any handcuffs or anything on you? No. All right. Um, just so you know, that door right there is unlocked, okay? If you walk out the door at any time during the interview, if you want to, you go to the left and you're in the parking lot. All right? You know that you're not under arrest and you don't have to talk to us, right? I told you that back at the scene. The reason I'm telling you this is because I'm not here to try to trick you. There's no tricks here, all right? I'm just trying to figure out what happened. Okay? Let me go over a couple basic things like One your moment. name, your name, and where you live, and your date of birth, and, and stuff like that so we can get it on the record. Stand by, please. <laughs> like I said, I'm Detective Tabor. This is Detective the Two. Um, and you... <laughs> Uh, I was provided your name, uh, Melissa Turner, is that correct? Yes. Can you spell it for me? M-B-L-I-S-S-A-T-U-R-N-A-R. All right, Ms. Turner, do you got a middle name? Rose. Rose, like the flower? R-O-S-E. Okay. When's your birthday? November 25th, 1992. Now... Was, uh, other than me asking you what your name was at the scene and, you know, who you lived there with, did I ask you any other questions about what happened? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, well, I, I didn't, other than what your name was. But, no, I know. I'm just, I just want to make sure that we cover that, that I didn't ask you anything or anything like that at the, at the scene there. Did the deputies ask you anything in the car pertaining to this investigation? No, because I told them to talk bullshit to me. Tell me shit. Tell me about things that don't matter. Kind of keep your mind off what's going on? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, where, can you raise your right hand for me? You swear everything you're going to tell me today is going to be the truth? I swear. Okay, you can put your hand down. Do you want, do you want to wear, keep wearing those gloves or do you want to take them off? Because it, it's my understanding um, a deputy had you put those... Um, you signed something or, or you're handling a pen, so he had he had you put those on because I of the blood. I was getting things bloody because I was covered in his blood. Okay. Would you like to take them off? You're more than welcome to take them off. It's completely up to you. I just didn't know. I mean, we all it's uncomfortable. Your hands will start sweat. Those your hands start getting sweaty in that and get all the yucky. I'll leave them on for now. Okay. I don't know if I can be able to take them off and see that the blood will be in it. Um. You, you you swear that everything you're going to tell me is going to be the truth today? Yes. You can read and write the English language? Yes. Do you know where you're at right now? Yes. Um, do you know what's going on? Yes. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Yes. The detective asked Melissa if she is under the influence of any drugs or alcohol, then states he smelled alcohol on her breath when they spoke at the scene. She admits to drinking vodka with Matthew the night before, but getting tired around 10.30 and going to sleep. According to Melissa, Matthew had a high tolerance for alcohol. She claims she told Matthew earlier that night they should take a break from drinking and that she didn't get very drunk that night. She said that Matthew had a drinking problem and that he acknowledged his problem with alcohol. All right. In fairness, when I was talking to you earlier back at, at the house over there, I smoked a little bit of alcohol in the breath. We were drinking last night. No, that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with drinking. I just want to make sure that I cover that so I know what your state is when I'm asking you questions. Yeah, that's no, it. we were drinking last night. Okay. But I've, obviously not since I woke up. When's the last time you had a drink? Probably 10-ish last night, 10 to 30 maybe. Okay. Don't, I'm not trying to pick on you and I don't want you to get upset with me. I'm just trying to cover it. I, for, in fairness to you, I can smell it, so I don't want to... Listen, the only thing I have in this world is my word. I'm not, I don't want to play any tricks or anything. I could smell it, so I wanted to ask you about it. Well, is that fair? That's fine, because, I mean, I, I get up early all the time, 4, 4.30 in the morning, 
So by 10, 10 o'clock at night, I'm really spent. And I, and I they told the whoever I was talking to there that I just, I remember just being tired. Yeah, we were drinking, but I just remember being tired and curling up in the chair. Since, who do you live there with? What's his name? <laughs> Can you spell the last name? And you two live there together? Yes. Does anyone... We bought the house together. It's only us. When did you all buy the house? <laughs> of this year? Yes. <clears throat> How long have you been doing? Two and a half years. Engaged. You said you had some animals there at the house. Four cats, a dog, and a snake. Wow. So you like you like animals. We do like animals. I was telling the deputies, he was like an animal whisperer. <coughs> there. Yeah, I know. We, I know when we were leaving there, you were wanted to make sure they were safe and okay. The the cat that went over to the neighbors, Blue, the gray one, adopted us. She jumped into the truck with him one night when he was coming home from a friend's house and just slept on his lap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he loved animals. <laughs> When's the last time um, you said you went to bed? What time did you from the, start there? What, what time did you go to bed last night? I mean, like I said, we were having some drinks. And we were, but I, I remember getting really tired around ten, and I just wanted to go to bed and. 10.30-ish was when I remember, 10.30, 11 maybe, is when I remember going to curl up on the, the, the chair, because I slept on that, that big chair that's in my little office area downstairs. Okay. What were you guys drinking? Vodka. Just vodka, anything else? I mean, vodka and, and, and Coke and water, you know, just, you know. Were you having drinks or were you guys taking shots? We were taking shots. Would you say, now I don't know what your uh, alcohol tolerance is, would, what would you say you were intoxicated? I, when you went to well sleep? I was taking, he's, he can drink like, he could, I mean, he was always, he could drink you under the table. Does he have he a He had drink? a high metabolism and it was just always, he was just always running through booze. I was, I remember I made a specific point of it even earlier in the night to tell him, just, I want to stop, let's take a break, and for an hour and a half, at least earlier in the night, I didn't drink a single thing, I just had water, and we ate, and everything, we had, <laughs> we, we ate dinner, and that was it, and I mean, I got drunk, yeah, but not obliterated you know like I would say I was beyond being just buzzed because we did get drunk but that's I mean that's what we did we just we were there at the house ourselves that's what we would do on a night when uh, we didn't have to get up and do anything the next morning we had drinks he always liked drinking he was a drinker did he have a, would you say he had a drinking problem or no he had a drinking problem. Okay. I can't bullshit you. I mean, his mom will tell you the same thing. He did. He would have. He would admit it himself. What about you? Me? No. Melissa denies that Matthew used any drugs because he knew she strongly disapproved. However, she admitted to the detectives that he did use heroin, cocaine, and marijuana before they met. These statements, in combination with her previous statements about Matthew's drinking problem, could be her attempt to make detectives question Matthew's mental state and judgment leading up to his death. This video shows a desperate escape attempt by a criminal who had successfully concealed a weapon, which he then turns on police while still under arrest. You can watch it right now, plus many more Patreon-exclusive videos for as little as $2 a month at patreon.com slash strangerstoriesplus. 
besides the besides the alcohol last night, were there any drugs? No. We're not the drug police, so we're, we're no. I'm just asking. No, he would never touch any of that. Well, because that was a deal breaker for me, and he knew that. He knew if he touched anything like that again, that he would lose me. Okay. And that was my number one deal breaker with him. And I'm assuming... So, you know, the drug police, he was not shy about it in his past when he was younger. He was into hard drugs. Okay. But it's been years since then, because he knew that was my number one deal breaker. If he touched it again, we were done. I didn't give a shit. That was it. What kind of drugs was he into previously? Heroin mostly. Um, I didn't know him at the time that he was on drugs. This is him telling me about his past. He smoked weed all the time. He was into heroin, coke uh, every now and then maybe. I don't know anything else really. Okay. But it had been a solid three years since he had touched any of it. You guys, you said that you all bought the house back in January. Did you move in then? Yes. Okay. Where did you meet him at? Tinder. Tinder? <laughs> That's a dating app, right? Yeah. All right. Then that was two and a half years ago? It was. April 26th was our first time meeting in person. When did you all actually start living together? Around the time that Irma hit. Irma hit? So that was last year, right? In October? It was 2017. Yeah, 17. Oh, so 2017. Yeah. Because he was living in this little, uh, looked like it might fall over if he blew on it too hard kind of house with his brother. So whenever Irma hit, he moved all of his stuff to where I was living because it was a big brick townhouse. Thought it'd be a little bit safer there. Mm -hmm. Which it was. Um, and when, I mean, <coughs> just, he moved it there for the, for the hurricane, but we just stayed living together since. You had mentioned you all were drinking because you didn't, you drank on the nights that you, when you didn't have to get up the next morning to do yeah, anything. Did, I, did, do either of you work? I do, yeah, and he, he helps me with work. He was working with, um, just recently working with, um, yeah. Okay. The solar panel center of my house is how he got the job because the people who came to sell us <laughs> We're like, wow, you you know a lot about this. That's a deal there. Maybe you should maybe you should work for us. <laughs> we pretty much hiring him. Wow. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'm a camp model. Okay. So I work from home. Um, there's a room upstairs that you know has all my work stuff in it, and it's my work room, and then that's it. Okay. Um, let me take a, or can you take us back to yesterday, um, from the time you guys woke up and to kind of how we got here today? Yeah, I suppose you think. The best that you can. That's all we're asking for. <laughs> I woke up at four yesterday. It was normal. Got mm -hmm. up, I put morning on Morning or p.m.? Morning. So, I'm a morning person. So do you work like during the night? Or? I work early mornings. Okay. So you got up around 4 p.m.? Well, I got up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Yesterday. I got up at 4 a.m., got up, got ready, my makeup and everything, got on, I did, got on cam, did my work, logged off around 9.30 in the morning, and, and then I went and I put on my workout clothes, um, and he was awake. He put on his too, because we had, we had just gone and gotten um, new shoes together, new Nikes, so he, we could work out together and everything. So we got dressed and we took the dog on a walk. So it was 30 minute walk around the neighborhood. What time do you think you walked the dog yesterday? Around 10. Okay. From 10 to 30 in the morning. What'd y'all do next? When we got back to the house, um, I went out to the garage to work out more. And he stayed in the house. He was cleaning up the kitchen for the dishes and dishwasher, that sort of thing. I went and I, I, I took a shower whenever I got back in. And, we got 
ready. We we put on shoes again. We went up, we went to Home Depot. What time did you go to Home Depot? It was around twelve, twelve thirty. In the afternoon. Yes. I know they're not open at midnight, but I just want to be. It was around then, yeah. After after my shower and everything. And then What'd y'all go to Home Depot for? <laughs> I saw like the wooden stuff in the garage because the garage door was open, so I was just curious. Well, the big pumpkin bit in the yard. Oh, yes. Um, and the the spikes that came with him were only these little four-inch things, and with the rain that we'd been having, the ground was so soft he fell right over. So we went, we got 18-inch garden spikes and just put them in the ground. Which Home Depot did y'all go to? The one, um, I don't know if it's Riverview branded, the one that's 10 minutes north of the house, off of 301, right there by the wall. Okay, I know which one you're talking about. All right, what do you guys do once you get back to, uh, or did you go anywhere after Home Depot? We went to Publix because we didn't really have anything for lunch in the house and he wanted to cook us lunch. What did he make? He got a big filet, cut it in half for the two of us, and cooked it up perfect. For who, who did he cook it up for? Me and him. Oh. And his was medium rare and mine was blue, because that's how I liked my steak. He cooked it up perfect for us. We had that, some bread, a little bit of cheese. What time was lunch? It was a late lunch for us. It was around 2 o'clock. Then we sat down to eat. Okay. Were you all, when did you, when did, were there any drinks at, at lunch? A glass of wine. The bottle is still sitting in the kitchen. We only had a glass each. What kind of wine was it? It was a red, I'm not sure exactly. We got a Bogo at Publix. Okay, what happened next? Um, we had just had our windows replaced to the house uh, in the last several weeks. So um, one of the guys from the company came by to put on the last bit of the like covers, the sliders or whatever, that you had to wait until after the inspection was done. At three o'clock he came by to do that. He was right on time, which I was surprised because no one else in that. The workers, everything, they were always, <laughs> when they were doing the windows, were so off with their time. They would say tomorrow and it would be next week kind of thing. Yeah, when you're using subcontractors like that, it's sometimes it happens. So they had to wait to put the screens on, you said? It was uh, like the cut for the sliding glass doors, okay. the covers to you know, hide all the screws and stuff. Oh, so just like touch up, finish yeah. up work, gotcha. Just things that the inspector needed to see was there, right? And he had to skip and put the covers on that stuff. Gotcha. Do you know who their company was that came out there to do Reese's the windows? Reese's Windows. Reese's? Yeah, R E E C E. Windows. How long did that take them yesterday to do that? 20 minutes, maybe. It wasn't there long. That's pretty efficient. Or you just don't have that. All he had to do was the sliding glass door. Uh, ah, okay. So. Okay. All right. Once window man leaves, what happens next? Um, I had to do some work on the computer, um, we had some, some emails and stuff like that. So I did that until probably 5, 5.30ish. Um, he was just watching TV while I was doing that. Um, Is this, do you have a computer up in your workroom? I do, and I also have one in the office downstairs. Okay. Are they, um, Laptops or no. uh, desktops? Desktops. Okay. What time were you done checking your emails and stuff? It was probably 5.30ish. Okay. Um, from there, I remember, um, I remember vacuuming. I mean, we have a husky, and vacuuming is part of our daily routine. Lots of shitting. I remember vacuuming and we were trying to figure out something to do for the night if we wanted to go anywhere or anything, but we ended up, we played some card games for a bit. Do you remember what time you started playing card games? She recounts her day in great detail.
including the time she and Matthew spent together running errands and playing card games. Trauma can manifest in many ways and show different symptoms for different people. While some trauma survivors and witnesses experience memory disruption or distortion, others are able to remember events in elaborate detail. It's possible that the detectives assumed Melissa's precise recall of specifics was related to the trauma of finding Matthew's body. However, they will eventually learn this was not the case. It was around 6, 6.15. Cause the animals, the cats and the dog always get fed at seven at night. So they started circling us. So we were playing. <laughs> they were like clockwork, huh? Oh, yes. They, were, they started to circle us around, getting closer to 6.37. So we got up and fed them. And then, um, You remember what kind of games you all were playing? Rummy, blackjack, kind of, you know, just anything. The reason I'm asking is because, you know, there's card games and there's drinking games. I don't know if you all were playing drinking games or if you were just playing rummy or... So I we were playing, I mean, it, we we played, like, when it got to, you lost this much, yeah, you take a shot, but after three shots, we, we said, okay, Game that's over. enough. Like, yeah, like, let's take a break, have some water for a minute. We stopped. We did. She eventually admits that the card games they played were drinking games and that the two of them had about three shots each before eating dinner later that evening. Melissa continues to be reluctant to admit the extent of her drinking that night, likely for the fear that this will cast doubt on her version of events. What time did you guys stop? Around, around, it was around the time that we had to feed the animals, probably around seven. Okay. That's kind of what I was going to ask. When did when do you think you started drinking? Was it when you started playing the card games? Was it before? It was that? a little bit after that, yeah. So right after you started, you started drinking. He had been having beers throughout the day, but that's I mean that's his thing. Like I mean he he drinks like a fish in fucking water. So while you're answering emails and he's watching TV, he's maybe having a few beers. Maybe a beer or two. Actually, I don't think he was having beers at that time because he was low on beer, so he wasn't really. What's his choice of beer? That depends on if he's just drinking beer to drink beer or if he's drinking beer to enjoy it. All right, so he beer likes to drink beer. Beer to drink beer, Corona, Bud Light, Lime, recently Bud Light Lime are normally his picks. Um, beer, if he's trying to enjoy it, he likes IPAs, he hates lagers. IPAs. Love what he is. He doesn't like lagers, he likes IPAs? Yes, he likes, um, he likes Lagunitas, Sweetwater. Um, those are ones he enjoys. Sierra drinking. Nevada. Because right, yeah. those are a little bit heavier on the alcohol content, so they're... But he only drinks those when he's wanting to just sit down and enjoy mm -hmm. beer. He wasn't drinking that last day, he was just having Coronas. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the box, I believe, is still in the refrigerator in the garage. He was, you said that's the beer he drinks when he just wants to just drink Just them. have a beer, you know, not trying to sit down and like really enjoy it, just like, fuck, just have a beer kind of thing. Okay. We'll just have a Corona or a Bud Light kind of thing. Um, so you all feed the cats around seven? Yeah, the cats. How long does that normally take you? With four cats, a dog, and a four snake? Four cats, a dog, I mean, the snake doesn't eat every day. Yeah. But, um... It takes from them from the start of it till they're all done probably 20 minutes okay. and we have to watch them because the dog will try and eat their food and she did try to eat it last night and we had to make sure we were kept she tried to eat their food Don't and we had to we make sure she went outside to use the bathroom so the cats could finish and <coughs> once the feeding once the feeding process was done what do y'all do next we just not really talked about stuff we talked to um the there's one of the papers probably still on the kitchen counter that has like a rough drawing that he did of like the outline of like here's our house here's our sidewalk because he did that Halloween I love Halloween it's such a big thing for me and he wanted our house to we needed more lights outside he wanted to be more illuminated not just have this big pumpkin man thing standing out there he wanted more lights and things to illuminate the other decorations that we had out there so he drew a whole little diagram <laughs> and 
we were talking about the lights and everything we were gonna go get. <laughs> we said maybe not this year, it won't be the best, but we'll go get everything on clearance right after Halloween. Yeah, that's usually when you get the best deals. That's what I always do. And whatever's left over, you know, because we're trying to clear our shelves for our inventory. Yeah. Um, so when you guys are, were you all talking, you said at the table? Is that in the kitchen or? In the island, in the kitchen. That's, I mean, uh, we like to, we like to stand and walk around a lot. I mean, whatever, we're just talking. It helps us, you know, think and everything. We were just talking, walking around the island, you know. The detective brings up the question of drinking again. It is common for investigators to focus on this topic in order to determine how intoxicated witnesses and other parties were around the time of the crime. At this point, Melissa is only a witness, not a suspect. But her recollection of events and the accuracy of her reports of that night could greatly be impacted if she drank a significant amount. Did you guys start drinking back at that time again, or when did you guys start picking up the... We started drinking again around 7.30, 7.45-ish. I mean, no, it was, it was 8, actually, because we... <laughs> We sent uh, Alexa a reminder for me to put the put the food in the oven, what and was that it? took uh, it took it took uh, thirty forty five minutes for it to heat up. We had uh, it was a taco fiesta mixing that he had cooked previously, and we had a lot of it left over, so we put it in a bowl and put it in the freezer to keep it for later. And we took that out earlier in the day and thought it, and we're having, we're heating that up and having that for dinner. And that was around 8 o'clock, you said, when you put it in? When I put it in, yeah. Right. And we had a shot or two, but we kept drinking, we were drinking water, and talking, and the food was done, and we each had plenty of food, like, I was, we were actually proud of ourselves because sometimes we just like end up just going to bed and not eating dinner because you know when you when, I mean sometimes when you drink you just uh, food you yeah. know like and your stomach fills up and kind of swells up and yeah you, like, you just yeah. don't want to eat like you know you should but sometimes you don't and that was uh, but last night we didn't we actually like we stopped drinking purposefully stopped drinking made ourselves just drink water mm -hmm. and then we had dinner a good like filling it like you had tortillas there was ground beef you know all the taco -y stuff and stuff and a really big filling dinner and, and we felt good after that like we felt fine you said it took about how long to cook um like 30 45 30, minutes. 30 45 minutes yeah i was it was still really cool i guess because it was maybe a little bit still frozen from the freezer okay and it was just the two of you there? Yes. And did anybody else come over? No. When's the last time anybody else had ever come over to the house? Like a visitor? Like a friend or something? Mm -hmm. It's been a while. Um, um, honestly, we keep to ourselves a lot. No, he had, he had um, in September. That's the last time anybody came to the house? Yeah. The screen guy wasn't there, right? No. He left. Uh, he left. He left after he did his job. Okay. So, I mean, besides the screen guys, I mean, we never really had, we didn't have anyone actually over at the house. So, that that, so last night when you guys were eating dinner, it was just the two of you alone? Yeah. Having some drinks and eating some Mexican food? Yeah. Who doesn't love Mexican food? I love it. Um, all right, so after dinner, what happens? What do you guys do next? We're at about 9.45 now, I'd say. Yeah, that sounds right. Um. Inconsistencies with Melissa's story begin to creep out. Despite having told the detectives earlier in the interview that all they drank the night before was vodka, Melissa now says that around 9.45 p.m. she had a hard seltzer and Matthew was drinking beer. We had, I was, um, the truly, the, the hard seltzers, to have like um, oh, hard seltzers. the hard seltzers that maybe you know about the same as much as the beer. I I was having one of those. He was having a beer, Corona. Did you drink a white claw? No. You know what that is? I know what they are. Yeah. That's like the new fad. I know. I don't. They're I'm too sweet asking, for me. You're not into that. Okay. They're too sweet for me. Okay. I like the Truly's. There's less sweetness and less sugar and stuff. 
So you're drinking hard seltzer and he's drinking... I was drinking that, so, I mean, I was having that, he was having a beer. I was basically having the girly version of a beer. Okay. Essentially. And we were doing that, and we were just, we were just talking about things. We were talking about, um... We, we pulled up the, the credit card, the Capital One, because we... Share a card. I'm sorry? We share a card. Uh-huh. The Capital One card. We share a card. We were bringing it up and looking at it because of the charges and everything on it. And because it's a cashback card. And our goal was always whenever the cashback got to a thousand, we were going to take ourselves on a vacation. And we had just hit around 600. <laughs> And that's a card you guys share? <laughs> yes, it was his card and he got me added onto it and we were talking last night about putting him onto my bank accounts and everything so he could help help manage the money more and stuff. And it just just both of us just keep a look over it. And we were talking we were talking about that. We talked about the Halloween decorations a bit more. We talked about vacations and what we wanted to do and you know, kinda of just trying to sort our lives out kind of thing, like make sure we had a clear path with what we wanted to do with our lives. Are you all on the same page when it comes to all that? I'm sorry you said absolutely. So there wasn't any like disagreements or any fighting, anything like that? We didn't want kids. We had our animals. If anything, we wanted more of them. We wanted to travel the world. We wanted to just live life with each other. What was his mood last night when you guys were talking about this? Is he just kind of talking about it and brushing it off? Was he excited about it? Was he, was he stressed about anything? The only thing that stressed him out was that he felt he wasn't doing his part to help with the house and money because I did make the majority of the money, especially with him being out of a job. But I reassured him, as I had plenty of times, that him not just because he wasn't actually working and getting a paycheck didn't mean anything because he was at the house taking care of the animals, cooking, cleaning, helping me, helping me, helped us, helped me have more time to, to make money. So in your opinion, he, he's holding up his end of the deal just Absolutely. by doing the housework and everything like that. Absolutely. And he was, and not even just doing the housework, he was fixing things around the house. There was, I mean, we had a leak in, in, our, in our AC drain pipe, but there was a hole in the ceiling, and we were talking about fixing that, and, and there was a hole where he started, he cut out the, where our dog started to chew the drywall, he cut it all out, and all he needed to do was put the drywall in and match it up. <laughs> he was doing things, I mean, we just bought the house in January, so I mean, there was of course things that we needed to, or wanted to, to change to suit us. And he was working all of those things. How long did that, that uh, credit, when you guys were talking about the vacations and all that, how long did that last? We kind of got lost to it. We were just talking about it, dreaming, having a good time, maybe 30 minutes just on that. And then once that was, once you guys wrapped that up, what happened next? Or what did y'all do? Um... I mean, we were talking about vacations and money and stuff at the same time, and I feel like I I know what happened next. As I I've been having a stomach issue lately, where I get I just start burping a lot, and I get the hiccups, and from the hiccups I start I throw up. I didn't get to throw it because he helped me calm down and just control my breathing and like make the hiccups go away. And that's what happened next. But for me, that's a really, it's a really exhausting process. You mean me hiccuping for 15 minutes. And I mean, sometimes it's longer for me. I mean, normally the hiccups can be anywhere from 10 or 15 minutes to it's been an hour of just straight hiccups. And that's annoying as shit and exhausting at the same time. So I'm not sure exactly how long I had the hiccups last night, but I know that that started up again. I don't know why, what it is with me. What did, what did he do while you had the hiccups? He was just there with me, telling me to breathe, 
to calm down. Was he trying to help you? Absolutely. Breathe, calm down, hold my breath. He was breathing with me, helping me to steady myself. And still just the two of you there, right? Yes. All right. So that last, you don't know how long that lasts, but then I'm what, not sure exactly, no. What I'm do sorry. you do? What, 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 goes, what goes on next? Um, we... What time do you think you have those hiccups? 10-ish, 10, 10, around 10, 15. Is that, I'm sorry, say that again? 10, 10, 15-ish is when they started. And you had mentioned earlier in, the, in our conversation that you probably had your last drink around 10. So is it fair to say that you had? You yeah, because I, and I stopped drinking when I got the hiccups okay. because it, I mean, I don't want to have any drink whenever, I mean, the hiccups fucking suck. They're exhausting. I hate them. You said it sometimes bleeds you to throw up? Sometimes it does, yeah. It so you doesn't don't want to be drinking not, and then just throwing it right back up. And, it, and, and it's not like a, a drinking thing for me either. They just happen and right. I start hiccuping and then that leads to throwing up and no matter what I'm doing. Um, and, uh, fuck. I had the and then, yeah, because I had the hiccups and whenever he was like, breathe with me doing this and he knocked over my truly. Your what? He, my, my drink, my truly uh, that I had. That's what, yeah. Where were you at when he was we trying were to in get the, you? in the kitchen by the island. Okay. And he was, and he knocked it over and spilled most of it. <laughs> um. How'd that make you feel? And Karen, I had 20 more in the fridge outside. And what we is, got a, we what got is a bogo. A truly? Truly, yeah. And that's yeah. the hard seltzer, right? Yes. We got a, we got a buy, buy, buy two, get one. So I had plenty of them outside of the garage in the fridge. I didn't care if he spilled it. It didn't matter. I'm just going to get another I didn't, but I could if I wanted one. Just go get another one. Did your, did your hiccups had, and stuff subdue? Did they stop or? They did. He helped me breathe. I had a hiccup that like, oh, the last, I remember specifically the last one was like hiccup with throw up. Mm -hmm. I like hiccup threw up, but I made it to the bathroom and in the toilet kind of, it was just a little spit up. Um, yeah. And then, then my hiccups stopped after that. And I started, I remember it was getting late. And, cause yeah, it was probably, I mean, 10.30ish, maybe. I don't I wasn't keeping, not like I was keeping tabs on the time. Right. But, so, 10.30 sounds about right. And I remember getting tired and I just wanted to go to bed. Okay, did you go to bed? Is that what you did next? I think, well he was, he, you get talking when you get drinking and stuff, and he was still having his beers. And I think, I mean, I remember he was, I remember he was just still going and talking about stuff. And I was kind of like, yeah, I'm here, but I really, I'm just, I want to go to bed. Kind of like one of those, like, uh huh. Kind of, like, I'm tired. What? I'm married. I'm there with you. All right. Like, I, know, I know what you mean. You and me both. Yeah. <laughs> So when you're tired, you're ready to go to bed. Yeah. And the other person wants to keep talking, and sometimes you're you're listening and you're doing the old uh, head yeah. nod, but yeah. then when they say what you, you know, they ask you a question, they trick you. They're like, oh, you're you're not listening to me. Especially because me and I mean I would get up so much earlier than him, so like right. our sleep schedules were off. Four thirty is early. And then he didn't wake up until nine or something, you know, like right. that. Our sleep schedules are always off, and so like like I said, I mean ten thirty eleven, I'm fucking spent. I'm just like. Mm -hmm. Doing that, uh huh. What was he talk? What was he talking about? Uh, I can't. I mean, no, I can't. It was. We were. What were? I mean, I was tired of shit at the point. <laughs> I mean, if you don't remember, you don't remember. I don't want to. I okay. think we were just. We were. We were. We were actually. I remember what it was we were talking about because. Um, his mom recently has he has health issues and stuff. His mom's a nurse, mm -hmm. and she said that you you might have. And we were talking. We got into talking about that again because we've gone through the symptoms, the list of it, and everything, and talked about it. 
we were just talking about like my planner is probably still in the kitchen that has be an adult call this person this health insurance all this stuff because we were gonna go him checked out he has we're pretty sure um, mm -hmm. his mother's been a nurse for years and years she has more fucking master's degrees than I could count but when we saw her last she like felt like where his thyroid and like the little gland should be and it's enlarged and everything like she thinks he she legit thinks he has and we we got started talking about that again because I mean it's a big issue for him it's funny because for him it's always he can't eat enough he's always just breaking through calories like his Fitbit will even like I've taken his pulse and counted the beats per minute I've taken I watched his Fitbit say he just sits there and is at 120 you know with his heart rate how long would you say that conversation last <sighs> She continued to stress that she was exhausted around 10.30 or 11 that night. She could barely keep her eyes open, so she went to sleep in her office. Melissa has no alibi for the night Matthew died. In fact, she was in the home with him when it happened. Instead, she tries to convince investigators that she was too tired to have been involved or that her exhaustion was so extreme she slept through whatever horrific events transpired that night. Because this is about... I don't know. I was, I was, like I said, I was just getting tired. Mm -hmm. What? What? And that, once that, I mean, did you but, fall asleep during that conversation, or did you? I just started to get tired. He, because he always knows when I start to get tired, I'll just start to like, and when it's that late, sometimes I'll just start to close my eyes. I don't even notice it. If we were sitting down, he wouldn't. We were on the couch. He always just like tips me over, so I just lie down on the couch. Where were you guys at when you were having that conversation? We were in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. After that conversation happens, what happens? After talking in the kitchen, I I remember going to lie down on the the chair in the office. Now, what time do you think that was? Eleven, maybe. Okay. When you go to sleep, um, it's still just you and him? It is. In the house? Okay. Is he awake when you fall asleep? Yes, he's always awake when I go to sleep. Was he in the was he in the office with you or I don't believe so. I think he was in the kitchen. Okay. When he was talking about um that was the conversation about what was his mood then? Was he was he worried about it? Was he He was never worried about anything. So he's just generally talking about it because his mom thought that maybe what he has, or you guys thought that's what he has. He uh, he didn't like talking about it because he, I mean, his health issues have been going on for a while, but he fit the bill for everything. But what I'm getting at is, while he's having this conversation, is he is he having it like in a panic, like, oh my gosh, I may have all this stuff, I, there's all this stuff wrong with me, or he's just telling you about it? This is a conversation we've had many times. We were just going over it again, like. Because we were talking about health insurance and like getting to a doctor. Because he, we believe he, we believe I'm. Because same thing with him, how he fits the bill for that. I same thing with me. I've the fatigue, the coldness. I mean everything. I can go down the list. I hit a lot of the symptoms, and it makes a lot of sense for my body type and how I eat and work out and stuff. Um, so we we're talking about. We were talking about that, the health insurance, and, and, and that all together, kind of in the, in the same to put. Gotcha. Did you, uh, so you fall asleep in the chair in the office. Did you wake up at all during the night? What time did you wake up this morning? Uh, probably 20 minutes before I called. I don't know what time it was. I don't even know what time it is right now. It's 11.33 a.m. Despite her distress early in the interview, she was able to provide detailed answers to the detective's questions and even crack some jokes. However, when asked to give an account of her activities from that morning leading up to finding Matthew's body, her emotions resurface. I don't know. I normally don't sleep in. But whatever time, I remember waking up and I didn't see him around and it, and it I saw the, the kitchen was like 
I didn't see him outside at first. I didn't see him there. I went upstairs and I checked the bedroom. I thought he went to bed up in upstairs. I checked upstairs. And then I came back down again. And I saw Farrah by the sliding glass door. She wanted outside. She wanted to go outside. So I opened the door. I was really. I just told him that he was sitting in the chair slumped over at the table. He was cold. I pulled him to the ground. I'm sorry. I know this must be very difficult for you. It feels like a dream. It feels like a nightmare because we didn't have nightmares. This has been it. Losing him. When you pulled when you pulled him onto the ground, what, what did you do? What'd you try to do? Or did you do anything? I grabbed his face. I tried to talk to him. His eyes were open. His pupils weren't doing anything. And that scared the shit out of me. I begged him to come back to me. Because I can't do this myself. I put my fingers. I tried to check for a pulse. These are the theatrics that numerous people familiar with the case recounted about Melissa. Her tears and grief were believable at this point in the investigation. But that would change as more details and additional evidence were uncovered. I ran. I ran. I, don't, I didn't know what to do. I ran in the house. I grabbed a cloth and put warm water on it and came back and did the same thing. I tried to start CPR, and then I went back in the house, and I got my phone. I got... <laughs> it was on speakerphone with the operator while I was trying to get the CPR. What kind of phone do you have? <laughs> you have to note, uh, the note, whatever, note 9, the note 10, I don't know. What, what color is it? It's blue in an otter box, so it's black with the otter box. What the phone number? <laughs> do you know the uh, carrier? Obviously, I'm sure you do. AT and T. Does it have any passcodes? It has a the code is 0925. You try to give him CPR, and then, so you're on the phone trying to give him CPR. Did anything else happen, or did the deputy just show up? She said that they were almost there, and I went and unlocked the door, and I went back to him, and then he came. Do you know where your phone's at right now? In the kitchen, I believe. I, I don't, I, I can't tell you exactly. I remember it was in the kitchen. I noticed that the house is two stories. Yeah. How many bedrooms are on the bottom? No bedrooms on the bottom. Where's the office? It's, um, uh, if you walk in the front door, it's to the left. It's to the left. It, where's the kitchen? Uh, uh so this, the, the stairs are in the middle. And okay. it's around, it's a big circle, pretty much. So the office is still off, but the kitchen's on the other side of the stairs. So when you walked out of the office, you said you slept in the office last night, right? When you walked out of the office, you had to walk, you said you walked towards um, the outside. You didn't, you didn't see him out there, right? And I didn't. You, and then you went upstairs to check? Yes. But you had to pass the kitchen to go upstairs? Yeah. I've never been inside, so that's why I'm kind of asking. So downstairs, there's 
the office, and so the front door, and the office, and then there's the laundry, the bathroom, and then the kitchen, and the living room here, and then the stairs are in the middle. And I, I walked around, but I didn't see him. You walked around where? Around the whole bottom stairs. In the kitchen? Yeah, I living went from room? the office to the laundry, the kitchen, to the living room, and then I didn't see him, so I went upstairs, but I didn't see him in bed. The detectives exchange glances here, likely because Melissa has just admitted to passing the kitchen when looking for Matthew. The kitchen floor was covered in blood, so it is strange that she wouldn't have noticed that when she was searching the house. The bed was still made for whenever we made it in the previous day, so I was confused. And I went back downstairs, and I, so the dog wanted to go outside, and so I was going to let her out. And then when I was walking towards the sliding glass doors is when I saw him at the table. When you wake up in the office, where would you expect him to be? If, if he just, if it was a normal night, you went to bed first, you assume he went to bed somewhere, where would you have expected him to be once you woke up from the office? Either in bed or on the couch. Okay, so Sometimes he would stay downstairs to watch TV more, um, so he didn't wake me up and, and cuddle the dog and the cats and fall asleep there. Or he came to bed with me and watched TV in bed. So you, so the couch he would have maybe fell asleep on would be downstairs? Yes. So is that why you first circled the staircase downstairs and then went upstairs to check the bed? Yes. Okay. I know, I, I know, you, I just want to make sure. You said you didn't wake up at all last night, in the middle of the night? No, but I don't, no. I've been pretty, I mean, lately I've been really tired. Um, so when I've been going to sleep, I just clunk out. I've been doing, I mean, I'm just tired. How, how are your sleep, been, how are your sleeping habits? I mean, do you normally sleep through the night, or? Um, lately, yeah. When I'm not stressed or anything, yeah, and I've been doing really good lately. Um, this past week, not lying, I'm on my period, so I've been dead ass tired. So when I hit the pillow, I'm out until my alarms go off in the morning. But other than that, you don't, you don't have any issues with sleeping? Not particularly. I mean, sometimes I wake up in the night to go pee, but that's about it. Do you take any kind of prescribed medications or anything? No. Neither does he. Neither does he? No. Um, when you woke up, or did, did you hear anything? No. Did, last night? No. Like in the night? No. What, what do you think happened? I mean, you know, you understand just from our standpoint, obviously, uh, we weren't there last night. If you could just take your best guess of what you thought could have happened. I don't know. Melissa's previous report of wandering the house looking for Matthew is about to change. <laughs> I woke up to just see the kitchen a bloody mess. <laughs> she now claims that she woke up to see the bloody mess in the kitchen rather than first noticing something was wrong when she saw Matthew outside. Did anything happen between the two of you in the kitchen to cause that bloody mess? Did he have any issues with anybody else? In what way do you mean? <laughs> like, does he owe, I mean, would anybody, is there anybody out there that wants to hurt him? Shouldn't be. I mean, maybe my ex. He did try and fucking shoot him before. When was that? Uh, two thousand seventeen, June, July. Who's your ex? Christopher Harrison, Hillsborough County. You guys are the ones that showed up to take him away. He spent two birthday? nights in jail. Um, his birthday is fuck uh, January eleventh. The January 28th, 20th, oh, fuck, I don't remember, uh, 1991. Does he still live in Hillsborough County? No, I believe he's living back in Polk County with mommy. Okay. When was the last time you talked to him? The night he got arrested. Do you know his phone number? No. 
And that was the June or July 2017? I believe it was, okay. I believe it was June, the end of June. What was he arrested for? Uh, domestic violence and assault with a deadly weapon, two counts for each. He what? got pissy because I had him at the house. But mind you, he had just had a girl upstairs that he was fucking and then sent on her way. But I was sick, he had bronchitis. I picked him up from work and brought him to the house. <coughs> explained all of this to Chris saying, he's sick, I have little, I'm going to pick up prescriptions now for him. He's sick as a dog. But we, I had just adopted a new cat too. So we were, that night happened to be downstairs in the living room, um, playing with the cat. Normally, whenever cat would come over, if Chris was there, we would keep to my room, you know, just to avoid conflict and all that. But we were downstairs, we had a new cat. Why well, should it have been a problem? Like, he was just fucking a girl up there in his room. But he had a, I don't know, wanted a, fucking show his dick that night and he came downstairs and started arguing and went upstairs because he was just gonna he put on his clothes he was just gonna leave but then Chris started yelling at me and back and forth yelling and um it ended up with me and grabbed me and just started kissing me and Chris had his phone funny as shit as he was recording all of us the entire time was just recording us kissing and then he said something turned and looked at him and then Chris just whipped out a fucking Glock pointing straight at him intending to shoot him um, and my dumb ass stepped in front of the gun and then he called the cops on himself <laughs> I have the video and everything this is an intruder in my house so he got arrested for that because he's just stupid is that the last incident between the two of them yes does Christopher know where you all live uh, I hope fucking not. I mean, did you, have you told him? No, absolutely not. I have, I mean, he tried to message me on, like, social media and stuff, and I told him, basically, go fuck yourself um, anytime you try to contact me. Okay. So. And that's the last time you physically have seen Chris is when he got arrested? Yes, that night. <clears throat> what about anybody else other than Christopher? Any issues or has express any concern about anybody else not, wanting to harm him? Nothing, not, no, absolutely not wanting to harm him, no. Have you ever talked about wanting to harm himself? After providing the detectives with the name of her ex-boyfriend, who had been violent in the past, Melissa now tries to focus the attention on Matthew's history of suicidal ideations. The Hillsborough County prosecutor stated that Melissa insinuated Matthew had killed himself. However, Matthew had been stabbed in the back which made investigators doubt Melissa's implication of self-harm. In the past, yes, but I didn't think, I never, I don't believe that. When, when's the last? Fuck him, he always told me he was going to die young. And I hated him every time he was said it. Who are we, who is him? Who are we talking about here? I'm talking about He always told me he had a feeling he was going to die young. When's the last time he told you that? It's been a long while, probably a year almost. He wasn't too happy with himself whenever we first started seeing each other. And it took him a while, but he finally started to... of life. <laughs> Shit, we were planning going to... to... He was to Mexico to Bali. He had trips we were planning. Did he ever to say that To bring his finger under this stupid glove. We're engaged. We were going to get married. Did he ever say he was going to hurt himself or anything like that? Not really. Did he say mention anything of that last night? No. About wanting to harm himself? No. Did he... Uh, huh? Excuse me, one minute. Did he seem that, um, did he seem upset or depressed or anything? I know he was stressed. No, about. but he always did his damnedest to hide it from me whenever he was sad or depressed. So, he did everything he could to hide it from me, even though I could tell, there was always a part of me that could tell when he was upset or sad. Mm -hmm. But he did his damnedest to hide it from me as best as he could. 
when uh, when you woke up this morning, was there anybody else in the house? No. Were the windows and doors and everything shut? Yes. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything. What what do you think happened? The detective asks again what Melissa thinks happened, but she continues to claim she has no idea. I don't know what injuries did he have. I saw the two cuts on his arms. I know they were deep, but what? What? Why? I don't know. I haven't been in the house. That's why I'm asking you. You were there, obviously. You have you have his blood. You know. I want you to trying see to get him. CPR and, and help him. I understand. You said he had two deep cuts on his arm? I, I, th I think they were on, like, his arm. I, I, was, I mean, at that point, I started to freak out. I don't know. It might have been one cut. It might have been more than that. That's all I saw, though. I know there was one, like, deep cut on his arm. But even I, I didn't even think that that was enough to bleed out from it. But maybe it was. And there was a broken... I, I don't remember the glass break yet. There, there was a broken glass in the kitchen that I walked past. Uh, and there was, a, there was a broken beer bottle in the garage, um, which, but that's, that's, I mean, I can't attribute that to anything because the way we have the garage set up right now, it's kind of hard to open the, garage, the door to the refrigerator sometimes. And I just, I've been, drop, I drop shit all the time, so I you can't. Do you sleepwalk? No. Does he sleepwalk? No. You pointed to, just a second ago, you pointed to your right arm. Is, is he right-handed or left-handed? He's right-handed. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Did you see any other injuries anywhere else? No, I remember. Besides, did you make any other phone calls? Does he have a phone? What's what's his phone? I mean, what's his phone number? <laughs> Did you use your phone? Or? I don't remember. I grabbed a phone. What kind of? Um, I'm, I'm trying to look. Maybe this will help me. I wrote it down. Uh, the number that called. Uh, so you must use so his, his his phone. What what kind of phone does he have? He's got an Android uh, LG. What color is it? It uh, I think it's black. It's in an Otter box. So. Do you know what color the Otter box is? Black. Yeah. What's the password? I don't know. I just use my fingerprint to get. <laughs> Um, six, three, seven, zero, I believe, maybe, or six, zero, one of the two, I think. I just use my fingerprint whenever I need his phone, so. You have your fingerprint set up on his phone? Yes, we both have our fingerprints set up on each other's phone. Okay. And what was the number to his phone? I'm sorry. His seven, seven, four. You know, is he got Sprint as well? He has Sprint, yes. I believe. Or, yeah. Are you all on the same plan? No, we're not. He's on AT&T. Oh, I'm sorry. I think he's on Sprint. No, Verizon. Verizon, I believe. I had mentioned that him plenty of times that we need to just get on the same plan because it would be cheaper. Oh, well, yeah. Um... <laughs> Do you have any injuries on your person? No. Any scratches or cuts or anything? None that I noticed. I mean, um, I was wearing. You weren't wearing those gloves. No. Somebody, the deputy at the scene, gave them to you. Here, let me get the trash can. Sorry. You can put those in, in here if you want. What happened? Yeah, I see you got a bandaid on your. I was just going to ask you about that. What happened there? Mm -hmm. And we went to the Nike store and got new shoes. 
amethystor from my or taking us taking the dog on a walk. <laughs> Where's the blister at? I'm getting to take the band-aids off. But... We'll keep it on for a second. What we'd like to do is that we're going to have a, um, a young lady or a uh, young man come and just, just photograph you. Take some of the raw photographs of you. And when we get to it, we'll, uh, we'll have the, you move that um, so we can get a picture of that, okay? Um, would you mind I think I your... did grab the glass, though. I was going to say, would you mind just taking those gloves off for me? Melissa admits to having a cut on her hand from grabbing broken glass that morning. However, security footage from inside Melissa and Matthew's home would show that her hand was bleeding the night before, contradicting her explanation of her injury. Can you put it right in that trash can? Yeah, I have a little cut on my hand. Can, can we see your, where you're going to? Right there. And that's from what? I think it's from grabbing the glass. Or, cause there, I know there was the broken glass this morning. I'm sorry, this morning's not the clearest thing in my mind. Wait. Do you know what, where, where or I what? remember it was a, a hard rock glass, I believe, in the kitchen. And I think I picked up a piece of it on the floor what about your other hand there i don't want to get all up in your girl can you just put your hands out just so i can see in there what's i know you got a lot of stuff on your it's hands just, it's just blood um i last or a week and a half ago, I grabbed a hot pan and burnt my hand. Okay, yeah, I can see a little bit of discolor there. Yeah, it's still tender. If I burnt my hand, that was my own dumbass fault. I just grabbed a hot pan and finished me. Um, let me see your ring. That's your guys' engagement ring? Yes, it's nice. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> he was saving up to make a formal proposal to me whenever he could afford the ring that he knew I wanted. I told him I didn't give a shit about that, but he wanted it to be perfect for me. <laughs> so this was more of a promise ring than anything. It was a, a step between his official proposal to me. It was... Can I see your other, uh, your outside your other? I don't think there's anything. <laughs> Is that a, what is that? A tear or a tear? Yeah. No, I'm looking at the uh, the uh, cut in the. Uh, oh, that's just good. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Do you have any other injuries up to your arms underneath your sleeves at all? No, I mean these sleeves don't really come up. So if there was, there would be a cut on the shirt. Is this the same outfit you woke up in this morning? And is this the same one you guys? Uh, it's what I was wearing last night, yes. Okay. So you went to bed in that, you woke up in that, you haven't yeah. changed or anything? Yeah. And I was wearing a t shirt yesterday and it was cold. So he gave me his shirt to wear. Um, I want to ask you just a couple of questions um, that may be. They're hard for me to ask, but I don't want you to take offense to them, okay? Um, these situations, we, our job is to gather all the facts and try to figure out what happened, all right? So you're not the first person that I've asked these kinds of questions to, yeah? but I have to ask them because I want to figure out what happened to Matthew, okay? I'm sorry. Go ahead, take it. Yeah. Um, are you? Hold on a second. Um, obviously, based on what you told me, and if anything's correct that I say, please correct me. Based on what what you told me, it was only you and Matthew in the house last night. <coughs> you guys were drinking throughout throughout the evening, 
having taken some shots. Uh, after you guys fed the cats around seven. You took a little break. Then you started drinking again, playing some card games. Started talking about Capital One. Yeah, um, the card games are earlier in the night, but I mean, yeah, it was right. just a sorry card kind games. Of a, it was just kind of a, a chill night. Like yeah, we played some games, we talked, and just you fall asleep around ten thirty, eleven in the chair inside the uh, the office, which is downstairs, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you woke up this morning. You come out, you don't see him, but the kitchen's in a bloody mess. And you find him outside sitting in a chair. You try to give him CPR when you call 911. You don't know what happened to him? I don't know. Was there any fighting or arguing last night? Do you all have a history of any kind of fighting or arguing? No, not nothing. I mean, couples argue sometimes. We never really fought. We would argue. Have you guys ever been physical with one another? No. Not sexually. I'm talking about like physical fight. Physical fight. The as physical as we got, it would be one of us having to fucking say, like, if we got too drunk, just sit down and chill out, kind of thing. Like, it wasn't hitting, pushing, anything like that. It was more just like, sit down and calm down. Melissa denies that she and Matthew have had any history of physical altercation and that their arguments didn't escalate past regular relationship disagreements. Investigators would later find out that the couple did have an intense argument on the night of Matthew's death. A neighbor's video surveillance camera recorded yelling and arguing coming from the house in which a woman's voice can be heard angrily screaming. Melissa would later be questioned about the recording and after initially denying it, she eventually admitted to arguing with Matthew that night. So, he did drink a lot, yeah, and there were times where I had to, like, make him just stop and, and drink water, you know, kind of be like, you can't, you're not drinking any more liquor, just sit down and, and you know, here's a fucking bottle of water, chill out kind of shit. And he would normally just fall over on the couch and fall asleep. That's why I checked downstairs, because I thought he was just asleep on the couch. So there was no arguing last night? No. We were having a great time. Was there anything physical? Violent? He was never violent. Not okay. me. Were you violent with him at all? <clears throat> you didn't push him or punch him, scratch him, anything like that? She continues to deny any violence between her and Matthew. However, note the clearing of her throat after she says she's never been violent toward him. Many experts and researchers believe subtleties like this can indicate that someone is lying, and investigators would later discover that this was the case in this particular instance. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do anything to you? No, we, know, we were never like that. I mean, like I said, couples argue, but we never got to that point. We'd yell at each other and go to bed and wake up and be like, fuck, I was a dick, I'm sorry. And that was the end of it. Like, we'd move on from it. So nothing, Nothing happened last night for him to get upset or violent with you, right? No. Was there anything that happened or that would have caused you to get violent with him? No. Did you do anything to harm him? No. Do you know who harmed him? No. Before you got, before, nine, before the cops showed up, did you move or remove anything from the house? No. Did you go anywhere? No. Talk to anybody from the mom you no. talked to when you called 911? No, the only thing I cared about was him. Do you guys normally keep your garage door open or closed? It's normally closed. Was it closed this morning when the cops got there? Um, yeah, I believe, I think, I think it was. I honestly, this morning was a blur, I can't remember. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't remember. When you guys go, go to and from the house, do you use the front door? It depends. Sometimes we use the front door, sometimes we go out through the garage. It's really up in the, I mean, we, we do either one, depending on you know, what we're doing. But just recounting um, your, your day yesterday, the last time you get home is when you guys come home from Home Depot and Publix and make the lunch, right? Yeah. So at that point, do you know if the garage was ever closed or open? I remember it was open because I opened it when I was working out. And That's whenever right. we went to leave for Home Depot, I said, 
I made a comment about it and he forgot to hit the button. So when we came back from Publix, I remember it was open because I was, I told him, I was like, you should, you didn't close it. And he was like, yeah, it's my bad. I just forgot to. Well, I'm just saying, once you guys got home, though, throughout the night, did it get closed at some point? I, I don't know. We were in and out of the garage because we were trying to figure out the fucking the fog machine thing that we got with the, the hose and that little the Halloween decoration thing. And so I can't I, I can't say, but I think so, because we I mean, normally we kept it closed because our cat. I do remember it was closed. OK. Because. Probably around 10, I do remember this now. Um, we couldn't put eyes on Blueberry, the little gray cat. She's, she likes to wander, go outside and all that. I thought she might have gone outside, outside, but she was in the garage. So I do remember the garage door was closed. Just to keep her in? Or? Yeah, because sometimes she, uh, you open a door and that cat is like lightning right behind you. She wants to go outside so badly. So you can say about 10 o'clock last night, you can say for sure uh, the garage is closed. Pretty, yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, I think this might be about the last question I may have. You may have some more. Um, sometimes I know with two guys sitting in here, it's hard for sometimes a, a woman to talk to them or open up to them. Okay, I, I know that. Um, but I just wanted to give you the chance or the opportunity if, I know you said there was nothing physical between the two of you last night, no. violent, you know, violent-wise. Um, was there any, I'm, not, I'm, I'm only asking this for investigation purposes, were you guys intimate with one another last night at all? No, because I'm still on my period. Okay. When's the last time you guys were, if you remember? Um, I believe yesterday morning I stopped his dick to wake him up, so if you want to count that. That's intimate. Um, so sometimes arguing can lead to something physical in which then can lead to something else. Did you do anything um, or did he do anything to you that would cause you to react in any kind of way to be violent with him? He was always amazing with me. Did he, he put his hands on me. Did he ever threaten you with any weapons or anything? Absolutely not. What about last night? Not that I remember. Does he, does he have any weapons? These knives would come up again after Melissa finally admits to the violent altercation on the night of Matthew's murder. She later claims that Matthew woke her up in the middle of the night and they got into an argument because she realized he was still drinking. She would also report that Matthew became physically aggressive and tried to choke her at which point she grabbed one of his knives and stabbed him in self-defense. Florida law allows the use of deadly force to prevent forcible felonies, great bodily harm, or imminent death. Melissa claimed self-defense because if her actions were found justified by a judge, the charges against her would be dismissed. Um, I mean, we got knives. He has, he likes knives. He's got them around the house. Um, and there is a gun upstairs in the master bedroom, the SIG. But that's it, really. Nothing, I mean, nothing too extreme. Just one gun and some knives. Most of the knives he has is like, his brother gave it to him and then his dad gave him this kind of thing. They're like collector's knives or hunting knives or what kind of knives are um, they? He's got two K bars. He's got, um, I don't know, one of them. Honestly, I don't know. One of them's like this really old, it has a wooden handle. And the blade is rusted to shit because I accidentally fell into water and that was my fault. And I try to I try to get all of it off. But I mean, I mean, most of the knives that he has mostly are, you know, gifts from his father or his brother kind of thing. You said uh, sometimes um, the most you guys will argue or, or uh, yell at each other is if somebody gets too drunk and says chill yeah, out or yeah, sit down or calm down sit the minute. fuck down and have some water and chill out did, any, did like, it ever get to I'll that put point you on a time out. did it ever get to that point last, last night last night that i remember now when is the last time you think one of you had to say that to the other oh god it's been such a long time we've been doing we've been i mean we've been trying to get back you know working out and everything hence the new shoes and all that um i really haven't drinking that much a lot lately 
That's the nice first time I've been uh, actually like drinking liquor in a while. Um, just because I don't for health for calorie like I just I'm trying to not put on weight. So it's been probably since we had to do something like say that probably three or four months. Any other questions? Uh, I jotted some stuff down throughout the course of uh, what you were saying, so let me see. When did he, um, you said he worked for when the yes. guy came over. When did he stop working for them? Uh, maybe a month ago. What Their was office is right down the road if you want to go ask. <laughs> why uh, Why did he stop? Did he get fired or did he leave? It's commission-based, and it's he had to go knock on doors and get people to make appointments, and then from there get them to sell them. So it was more so him just, I don't want to do this anymore. It was, yeah, it was, he was driving around a lot on his feet, like doing all this stuff and there was nothing coming back from it. It's not like they were getting paid hourly or anything. So, I, I mean, we made the decision to just say, fuck it, like, just stay here, help out around the house, do more around the house would be more, more beneficial. More beneficial, okay. Yeah, so did he ever work with anybody that he had problems with? Any co-workers? Not any particularly, any no. Okay. That was just one of the things I thought mean, down. So. One of his my dog for um another thing i jotted down you said you set a timer for the um taco thing on from uh, alexa device <laughs> yes. that's like one of those things Where you I talk go. to yeah where is that located in the house it's in the kitchen um right beside the refrigerator okay so it should just be sitting there in the kitchen that's what you guys use to set timers yeah okay. timers music like anything shopping groceries <laughs> mm, let's see I know, I know I stepped out for a second, and I think it was right around the time where uh, we were talking about you waking up and walking around the staircase, and you, you saw the kitchen and how it, it looked prior to going upstairs to look for him. And I didn't, I've never been in the house. I haven't been in there. I was told by deputies that responded that it's got some blood and some glass. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so is that uncommon if you wake up and you're walking around and see that? What's your reaction to that when you saw that? I mean, I saw it and I was worried and everything. That's why I mean, but that's why I was looking for him. Like, but I just I saw a broken glass and there was a lot of blood. But I didn't. I mean, there could have been a lot of blood, yeah. But I. I mean, if it was anything that terrible, I thought we would be sitting in the fucking ER, kind of thing. Like, I think like maybe like glass got broke. We cut or one of us cut ourselves or something, and just we were, I don't know, just didn't clean it up. He was drunk and didn't clean it up. But to you, um, cause, like again, I, I haven't been in there. But to you, it looks like a lot of blood and a lot of glass, like something happened. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you uh, at that point become more concerned about anything, or are you still just trying to see if he's sleeping upstairs? I was absolutely more concerned. Okay. I'm just asking because I, I don't, I'm like I said I haven't been in there. I don't know what kind of re reaction it's going to elicit. If I go in there, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just some little blood on the it's ground. Not just That's... a little blood on the ground. Okay. There so... was a lot of blood, and yeah, I saw it, but I kept looking for him. I ran upstairs. He wasn't in the bedroom. Uh, I mean, I know I said I came back downstairs, let the dog outside, but I was I was confused. I didn't know like if you're not here, you're not there. Where what what happened? Where are you? Kind of thing. Like I just I didn't. I, I, it didn't even occur to me that he would be outside. Only when you let the dog out when you realized he was Yeah, outside. because I was, I, I didn't know. Like, why would, I didn't think he would be outside. I didn't think to check there. It's not like we just go to sleep outside. That's never, we don't do that. Does he ever hang out outside when you guys are just hanging out and drinking or? Yeah, we, I mean, we we do that from time to time. Like, especially since the weather's been really nice lately. And we have the patio set, and we will we'll go outside and sit down and hang out. And was he bleeding last night when he went to sleep? No. Did he accidentally cut himself? He did. Melissa changes her story again, telling detectives that Matthew accidentally cut his hand before she went to bed that night. It is unclear whether she is being truthful about this detail, but what investigators do learn for certain is that the same in-home security footage that revealed Melissa's bleeding hand would also show the couple's body language as they walked throughout the home. Matthew is observed as relaxed 
and unharmed as Melissa follows angrily behind him. What do you mean? He accidentally, he did, he accidentally cut himself on I don't remember what he was doing, but I think he cut his hand on something. I don't remember, I don't know what it was, I don't remember, I don't know. When you went to sleep last night was... But it wasn't like massacre in the kitchen kind of thing. It was like wrap a fucking towel around it or a band-aid and you would have been fine. So there was there... But he wasn't bleeding, like he wasn't like bleeding everywhere. It was... I remember, I do remember that now. I think it was around when we were talking about the health insurance stuff. I think he caught him. I don't, I don't know what he was doing because I... I, I did, the ki- did the kitchen look like last night when you went to bed? Did the kitchen look like it did when you woke up this morning? Kitchen looked like our kitchen last night. This morning looks like a mess. So there wasn't blood and stuff all over the floor last night? Okay. I also think it stepped out when you talked about, um, he's mentioned wanting to hurt himself before. Has he ever given you any indication of how he would hurt himself or if he were to... How he would do it? Mm. He, not particularly. He just, in general, talked about uh, wanting to hurt himself. He never told you any he plan or anything. He tried to not get too specific with me. Because he knew it upset me. Do you have any questions for us? Can I have some ibuprofen? Uh, I don't. I don't think we can <laughs> administer any medications yeah, just because. Yeah, that would be good. We don't know. You know, we don't know you what what you've taken. We don't want to be the one to put that last ibuprofen in you and have it go over the. Top, you know. Understood. I just have from rage, what headache, I like, and I feel like all of this is full of bad nightmare. What I like to do, uh, Mister, is I'd like to get some photographs of you, okay? And since you got, you know, obviously blood all over you, um, they're not the most comfortable clothes, but I'd like to take your clothes and trade you out some other ones. Where do you have? Right now, we have uh, detectives at the house, okay? Mm-hmm. Where are you from again? North Carolina. Right, do you have any family that's local? Do you have any friends that you can go to their house and hang out? We can get you a ride there. One of the neighbors or anything like that. I don't. Like that. <laughs> I had. I just got to a fight months ago with my friend. Uh, I don't really have any other. If you can get in contact, with <laughs> I would like to go with him and Jen. Right. Well, we can try to do that. Do you know his phone number? I don't, but it's in his phone. Okay. Who is that? That's his brother. His brother. Okay. Um, Assuming he doesn't try to murder me because he already hates me for stealing his little brother away. I don't mean that in a literal, like, he is, last time I spoke to him, he was mad at me, though, because... So maybe we shouldn't call him and have you go over there? I don't have anyone else. Okay. I don't have her number on me, but if anyone Do you know where she life, is? No, Tampa somewhere. I've only been there once. She's a hoarder, so she doesn't like people at her house. This is the friend you had a fight with? Uh, no, that was his um, girlfriend. Oh, yeah. girl. Who's the girl that you had a, a Her name is Ludie, and she's the closest thing I can call to a friend right now. Ludi? Um, L-U-D-I? L-U-D-I. She's Russian. Her real name is Ludmila. Okay. Um, you have a, you know if her phone have, number or is that in your phone? It's in my phone, but if you can get her and call her. She's local enough to maybe she'd take you in when we explain to her what happened, what's, what's going on? What's her last name? Oh, fuck. I can't even think right now. Fuentes. F-U-E-N. Fuentes. <laughs> Did you address the... The book. I, I forgot we mentioned. I did not. We talked about it briefly when we were there, just because you were bringing it with you and wanting to bring it. Um, could you explain more what what that book is, or <coughs> mind opening it? It's and, because he had me sit down in the office to talk to me at first, or to calm me down anyway, to get me away from the. Because where I was sitting, I can see. Oh, so the deputy is the one who. who so he put me in the office instead before taking me outside to the garage. Okay. And this. I made this for us this year on our anniversary. 
because it's photos from the times that we first met. So it's kind of like a little diary of your guys' um, relationship. I see some photos, that's him and you in there. For first Christmas, Vegas, Philadelphia. We went to Cuba together. Mexico. That's our dog. That's our husky, Sarah. There's a cat back there too, I see. Yeah, yeah we have four cats. <laughs> That's when we bought the house in January. January 4th? <laughs> Let me go ahead and step out. Do you, did you have any other questions for us? We're gonna go ahead and step out. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna try to get them over here as quickly as we can and get some pictures of you. All right. Do you need to use the restroom or anything? Do you want a soda? Some something else. Or something other than water. Oh, a Coke would be nice. A Coke. Yeah, we'll get you a Coke. All right. Um, um, my my phone, I believe, is in the kitchen at the house. If you can have someone get Ludie's number, she should be ashamed, ashamed of my phone. Okay. What did you say her full name was? Ludie? Ludamila Fuentes. Ludum. She was adopted by a, um, a Spanish, Spanish couple here in Florida. Oh, so she's Russian, but she just has a Hispanic last name? Yeah. Okay. She, yeah, she's from Russia. So we'll get working on that, too, because if we want to... We're at the house right now. We're going to be there for a little while. So you're not going to be able to go in there until we're done. But we want to make sure that we get you somewhere, okay? Do you want to hang out in here until we get ready to take the pictures? Or would you like to sit outside? It's totally up to you. We got some picnic tables right there. You can get some fresh air if you'd like. I'll go outside. Okay. You can take your water with you. I'll go ahead and conclude this interview. It's uh, 1217 at uh, Friday, October 18th. And we'll get you a coke too, okay? Where are we? Are we staying here for a minute? Uh, she she wants to sit outside. Okay. Yeah. I gotta um, tell you something outside, just regarding something. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't. We have detectives there that are trying to, you know, they're processing the house and trying to figure out what maybe what happened in there with the evidence and stuff, and we're talking to you, and we're talking to the neighbors, so we're, we're working through it, okay? If you wanna, um, we can go outside in a second. Um, if you don't mind, if you would, wouldn't mind just sitting here for a second. I just gotta pop in for five seconds, and then appreciate it. The camera is still rolling as she repeatedly mutters to herself, this can't be real. But is this the acting performance of a lifetime? The physical evidence found at the scene, the incongruities in Melissa's story and Matthew's injuries, and the video and audio footage of that night led investigators to charge Melissa with murder. Melissa Turner was found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to 20.5 years in prison. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon link in the description below and drop a like on this video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm always curious to read what you thought of the case.